Hello, ladies. Welcome to another Tea Time Tuesday. Uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and have some prayer. Lord God, I thank you once again for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. Lord, I'm asking that you would just take over in this Bible study. Um, open up our minds and our hearts to receive your wisdom, to take in what it is that you have for each of us, God. And I pray that you would lead us to share that with someone else. Lord, I pray that you would give me the ability to just teach the way you see fit on today in a way that is acceptable and pleasing unto you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Okay. So, yes, we are almost done with our word study. Okay, so just recapping, right? We are in uh, doing a devotional from a book called Wonderfully Made, or Woman of God, Wonderfully Made. We're in week five, and we are looking at Romans 1.1, our base scripture for lesson one of week five. And our scripture reads, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. In the King James, and then in the ESV, Paul, a servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Romans chapter 1, verse 1, English Standard Version. Okay? So, For this week, we are going to be looking at Jesus Christ plus another word, okay? Um, And to be honest with y'all, I'm still pulling stuff for this this lesson. Like, I'm almost done with it, but it's it's a lot. Um, uh, If you can see my notes, I got them all typed up, and they are some pretty healthy notes. Okay, so just like we did for the word gospel, we're just going to take our time with it and, you know, cover as much as we can each each week, however long it takes us. I can tell you it's not as long as gospel was, but still, okay, we it's, it's a lot that we need to take our time and go over, okay. Now, the words that we've looked at up to this point. Right, we looked at separated, or in the ESV, set apart, aphorizo, to mark off by boundaries or limits, separate. Right, when God has separated us, He's putting those those boundaries there. Right, He sent us apart for Himself. Doesn't mean that you know He's isolating us, or it's like, oh, I'm I'm more important or more special or whatever. It's like, okay, this one's mine. Right, and by that, you know, it's like people should see that in our lives, right? Who do you belong to? Do you belong to Christ or do you belong to Satan? Like what what is your life saying about you? Right? Apostle, we talked about that too, apostolus. In today's time, we don't have any more apostles. Okay? Um, Basic meaning, a messenger once on a mission, right? Apo, uh, away, follows one sent, the one sent away, okay? But in order to be an apostle, there were some requirements for that, right? (laughs) Okay, first being, you have to have seen Jesus Christ, not in a vision or a dream, you had to actually see him, okay? Two, he has chosen you to be his apostle. So, therefore, we are all apostolic. We should be apostolic because we're all sent on a mission to go and tell people about him. But there is no more in today's time apostles because in order for you to be an apostle, that means that, oh, I saw Jesus. When, when you see him? Because we ain't supposed to see him until he come back. <laughs> okay. So, servant, doulos. We talked about that one too, right? Bond slave. Someone who belongs to another 
a bond slave without any ownership rights of their own. Okay, this is very different from slavery as we know it. But in this context, right, in Hebrew context, going back to that, right, if we are truly servants, doulos of Christ, that means I don't get to do whatever I want, when I want, how I want, and however I want to do it. I have to constantly seek to put the will of the Father above my own, just as Christ did himself. He humbled himself and made himself a servant. We're going to see that in some passages when we look at the name Jesus today. Okay? Paul, Kletos, invited, summoned by God to an office or to salvation. We are first called to salvation. Right? He calls us to relationship, and then we're called to a work. Okay? And then the last one we talked about was euangelion, gospel, the good news, the gospel. Okay? And remember, the gospel is not just the telling of Jesus Christ. It is the entire Bible. So we're getting to know uh, you know, or we study the Word of God to get to know the God of the Word, right? Jesus Christ is the Word. We will also look into that as well. So when I think about it, we're probably going to touch on a couple of words just from these two <laughs> words this week. Um, but like I told you all, I'm really excited, and I can't wait to get into it. It's very exciting. I learned a lot, so I'm hoping that in this it will kind of I don't know, give some revelation or something, something beautiful in his name, okay? But I don't want to, you know, I'm getting too ahead of myself. So, uh, as I said, this week's words, right, we're mainly going to be looking at Jesus, Jesus, and Christ. I always thought it was Christos, but it's Christos. So Jesus, Jesus, and Christ, Christos. I didn't want to say Christos, but <laughs> I'm going to go by the phonetic spelling for this word, okay? So, as I said, we're going to be looking at these two words, right? There's also another word specifically that we're going to look at, creo. Now, this is where Christos, or I'm sorry, Christos, comes from Creo. And the reason for that, we'll see later on, uh, we have to look at these two words together to get an understanding of what they mean, <clears throat> excuse me, and how they're related to each other. The beautiful thing about word studies, when you really start studying the words in a scripture, you, it's like a, a treasure trove of knowledge, like this deep well of knowledge. That's why we can't just stop at the surface level. When you study a word, really study a word. And word studies are amazing. You start really getting into it, and it's like, oh, wow. So that's what that word means. You know, I mean, the first time I really started doing a deep dive <laughs> into the word, and there was a lot of excitement, like, oh, my God, look at all this knowledge. Look at all these amazing things in God's word. And at the same time, there was anger, right? Like, anger immediately followed because I realized all that time, like, Satan baited me into not studying my word. And I was just falling for the, the okie doke every time. Oh, I don't know. It's just gonna, it's going to take me so long, and oh, do I really need to do all that? And I mean, I studied it. I I studied it, quote unquote, studied it. I mean, I read it. Isn't that enough? I think I've told y'all that multiple times before. When you do not properly study your word, is equivalent to you. You go to a banquet. They're having a whole feast for you, and you walk away. But like a little piece of bread. It's not even a whole slice of bread. It's not even a whole roll, dinner roll of bread. You take a little piece of that, nibble on it, 
and then leave, and then you walk around hangry all day because it's like, I'm hungry. I, man, they didn't have nothing there. No, they had it there. You just chose not to eat. They had it there for you. It was free. You didn't have to charge. You didn't have to pay for nothing. You could have helped yourself and got as many helpers as you wanted. You just chose not to. <laughs> okay, you chose not to dig. So it's like really take the time to go and do these on your own. Like, yeah, I'm giving it to y'all, but really take time to go and study for yourself on your own. There are too many free resources, free resources out there for you to use to study your Bible, for you to walk around biblically ignorant. Satan knows his word forwards and backwards. So what does that say for us? That means that we need to know our word too because Jesus didn't fight. <laughs> you know, something I watched the other day, a uh, podcast or something, and that was one of the things the woman made a good point. Like Jesus did not fight Satan with positive thinking. Jesus did not fight Satan with positive sayings. He fought Satan with the word. The word is our sword. So, yeah, we need to get very well acquainted with our word. That being said, let's get into this. So, first word is Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Now, coming from the Strong's Expanded uh, Exhaustive Concordance, this word is actually of Hebrew origin. To be to be clear, okay, Iesus, in this context, right, all the servant of Jesus Christ, okay, or in the ESV, Christ Jesus, that is Greek. So Iesus is Greek. But the word originally is of Hebrew origin. His name in the Hebrew, okay, you have Joshua. Jeshua, I'm oh, sorry, Jeshua, Yeshua, and then a shortened form of that is Joshua. Okay, now I remember um, a long time ago when we did the Ephesians Bible study, uh, there was something we talked about is how a lot of people often make ugly comments, um, you know, about people in Latin American culture who choose to name their children Jesus. But yet, because we don't know that Joshua is essentially the short form, Hebrew form of Jesus, like you don't have anything to say about those kids. It's like, well, they're naming their child Jesus too. It's just the short form is Joshua. <laughs> right? So it's like, okay. And as you know, we'll learn, there were actually two or three other people with this name, okay? So it's just that, you know, because of the significance of the name of Jesus, right? Now it's like from that time forward, oh, I, you know, I don't want to name my child that, right? It's just like people here in, in the country, in our country, like we would probably never name our child Judas, right? <laughs> Because we was like, ooh, I don't know. It's got a bad connotation. But you name your child Joshua. So careful, right? So again, Jesus in the Greek is Iesus. In the Hebrew, Yeshua, Yeshua, or the shortened form, Joshua. Okay? Now, Joshua. He has a whole book of the Bible, right? He is the Jewish leader, and even that, if you really take time to go and study that, it is symbolic of Jesus Christ, how he's leading the people into the promised land, okay? The Son is leading us to the Father. You see him all through Old Testament, right? We'll get into that later, though. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> okay. So, uh, his name, Yeshua or Jeshua, Joshua, is Jehovah saved. That is what Jesus' name means, Jehovah saved. 
So a little side note here, okay? Jehovah is God's personal name. And it is clear, it is certainly worth studying. The simplest definition for Jehovah, which you will also see, I think they call it a tetragram, but you'll also see the letters YWHW, that means Jehovah, okay? His name is the self-existent one, or as he told Moses, I am. In other words, the great I am, okay? For that, you can find it in Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, okay? So quickly, okay, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm kind of scared to look it up on my phone just because I don't know what's going on with it, and I'm always scared this is going to close out on me. But if it does that again this week, um, I'm just going to keep going. Just know that you'll have a recording. There will be a recording up on YouTube. Um, you know, Pastor has most of the recordings on his channel and on his podcast, so just be aware. Okay, so we're going to look at Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. I'm going to read first uh, the King James, and then I'll switch over to uh, ESV. Okay, so again, Exodus 3. Chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? Then what shall I say unto them? 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am have sent me unto you. The self-existent one. He exists all by himself. All by himself. God only does not need. Uh, like he is eternal. He is an eternal God. He was here before we before the earth and time began. He's going to be here forever. When all these things fade away, he's still going to be here. Okay? So it's his personal name, Jehovah. Okay? Like I said, it's definitely worth studying that name because that name as well has a lot of depth. Okay? Continue on with the side note. However, the meaning and significance of this name, as with all the names of God, because he has several names, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Mekadeshkim, right? We talked about a lot of those names in the names of God, which, who knows, we might have to redo that study one time. Okay. But uh, it goes much deeper than that. When you study it, take your time and go through it carefully. Take your time. I know we, you know, because we're in a, a fast-paced <laughs> kind of world, society rather, even I struggle with that a lot. Like even when I'm doing these lessons, it's like, you're not moving fast enough. You need to hurry up. <laughs> you should have had it complete already. And it's like, but if I haven't taken the time to like get to understand it for myself, how can I teach it? I can't teach something that I don't understand, right? Because then I most likely will be teaching a misunderstanding of something. And now I led other people astray off of false knowledge. You know, like, I don't want to be guilty of that. Okay? So I am. And I just remembered, y'all, I'm supposed to be reading the ESV. Sorry. So <laughs> reading those verses again in the ESV again. This is Exodus chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name, what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. 
and he said, Say this to the people of Israel. I am has sent me to you. The ESV, again, right? Sign it again. I am that I am. He is the great I am. Okay? So, Jehovah saved, right? Jesus, E.A.S. is in the Greek. In the Hebrew, Jeshua, Yeshua. The shortened form is Joshua. This is his human name, by the way. And his name is Jehovah saved. If we look at Jehovah by itself, it's God's personal name. Its basic meaning is the self-existent one, I am, or as many, you know, maybe some people have heard, the great I am. That's what we're referring to, Jehovah. Okay? Now, in the helps, okay, this is a transliteration of the Hebrew name. So, Iesus is a transliteration of Yeshua or Jeshua contracted to or shortened to Joshua, again, which means Yahweh saves. So they're saying Yahweh, okay, same, same person, or Yahweh is salvation. So this is another meaning. So it can mean Jehovah saved, Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is salvation. Again, that Y-W-H-W, Jehovah or Yahweh, that's what that is, okay? Now, for somebody who might be wondering, okay, when we're talking about a transliteration, in Merriam-Webster, I just decided to look it up, okay? A tra- to transliterate something or transliteration means to represent or spell in the characters of another alphabet. Uh, my name in Japanese does not, I can't, you know, it, it doesn't sound the same. It doesn't, because it's a different language. They don't have, it has different pronunciation. They use a whole different writing system. Japanese does not have an alphabet. They have a syllabary, okay? So when I use the syllables to write out my name in Japanese, it looks completely different. It's the same name. It's just, this is how you would say my name in Japanese. This is how you would pronounce it. It's just Jacqueline. Hi, Jacqueline this. <laughs> well, so I'm in Japanese, talking to somebody Japanese. Hajime maste, Jacqueline this. Hi, you know, nice to meet you. I'm Jacqueline. Okay, so Iesus is them taking, you know, it's like the Greek translation of that, right, the Greek, um, not translation, but transliteration, right? So what his name, Yeshua, Yeshua, is in the Greek. Now, continuing on, okay, Jesus Christ is properly Jesus the Christ, or Jesus. I want y'all to remember that. Jesus Christ is properly Jesus, the Christ, the Christ. Those are the the in there. We're going to get to a little bit later, but this is his title. Okay? We'll, we'll go into that when we start looking at Christos. It's his title. Again, it is his human name as the incarnate, eternal Son of God. Scripture reference for this. Let's go to Matthew. I'm looking at my time. I'm just going to stay in the ESV this time. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1. And we're going to look at verses 21 and 25. Okay. Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 and 25. Again, this is ESV, verse 21. You will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. Okay, this is verse 21. Now let's look at 25. Now this is talking about um, this is the angel <laughs> talking to, oh man, Joseph. I almost gave him the wrong name. <laughs> talking to Joseph, right, when he discovers, like, man, what's going on with with this woman, like, what's happening? And then the angel had to explain to him, like, she's going to give birth to the Messiah. <laughs> so verse 25, but he knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus, or Jesus. Um, they also have a reference for Luke chapter 1, verse 31. So you can read that as well. Luke. Chapter 1, verse 31. Okay. So he is the Christ, the divine Messiah, the second person of the Holy Trinity. Remember, one God, three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. So... We're not talking about the Holy Spirit today, but a lot of times people treat the Holy Spirit as a it. Uh, Holy Spirit is he. He is a person. He is the third person of the Holy Trinity. (laughs) Not an it or feeling. Holy Spirit, okay? Christ, Jesus, is the second person of the Holy Trinity. Okay? Now, his title, dipping into a little bit on Christ, okay? Christ, his title means the anointed one. That's why he's Jesus, the Christ. It's his title, the anointed one. So, Jesus, Christos, right? Jesus, the anointed one. Yeshua saves the anointed one. Yahweh salvation, the anointed one. The anointed one. <laughs> okay? And it's all, again recognizing him as the eternal pre incarnate Logos. Now, for this, you can read John chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, but we're going to look at that first verse in John. John chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, and this is ESV, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That word, word, in the Greek is logos. If you study it, you will find out that essentially it is the mind and logic of God. Okay? And then we read on, the Word became flesh. That's Jesus. So Jesus is the living Word. He is the Logos. The mind and logic of God. And then in the beginning, the Word was the Word, and the Word was with God. Was with means face to face. He was there from the beginning, face to face with the Father. And he came down, humbled himself (laughs) so that we could be redeemed of our sins, so that we could have an opportunity to be drawn back to the Father. Okay? So, continue on right with this side note. It's a pretty healthy side note. Just letting y'all know. Okay. Again. Jesus is the Greek transliteration of his Hebrew human name, Yeshua or Yeshua. And there are some different spellings. I'll have this. Um, It's in my notes. So I will share my notes when we get done with this lesson. I will go ahead and maybe put it in the comments when I um, upload this. But his name means Jehovah saves. 
Yahweh saves, or Yahweh is salvation. Jesus is often prophesied about in the Old Testament. Like I said earlier, right, you will see him throughout all of the Old Testament. That's why we need both. (laughs) To connect the two together. Like, I can't have one testament without that. I need both. Okay, well, how do I know he fulfilled it if I don't know about the prophecies to come? But if I know about the prophecies to come, then how do I know it was done if I don't have a new one? You know, so you need both. Okay, so to name a few, we'll not be reading all of these uh, at this time, but I'm going to list them. Again, I will make sure to put this in the comment section when I upload it. Okay, but to name a few. You have Genesis 3 and 15. Now, for this, you can refer back to the New Testament, uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 20, and Revelation chapter 12, verse 17. Again, you got Genesis 3 and 15. That's our Old Testament reference about Christ. For that one, you can connect it back to Romans chapter 16, verse 20, and Revelation, chapter 12, verse 17. Another one from the Old Testament, uh, Psalm 22, verses 16 through 19. For that one, okay, for Psalm 22, verses 16 through 19, We have a few references in the New Testament. We have Matthew, chapter 27, verse 35. Matthew 27, verse 35. Mark, chapter 15, verse 24. Luke, chapter 23, verse 34. And John... Chapter 19, verse 24. A lot of fours in there. <laughs> so I'll read again. So again, this is Psalm 22, verse 16 through 19. Our scripture references for this. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 35. Mark, chapter 15, verse 24. Luke, chapter 23. Verse 34, John chapter 19, verse 24. Read those. Please go read these. Like, please go read them. Okay. And then we have Micah chapter 5, verse 2. Isaiah chapter 9. And the, well, the rest of these are from Isaiah. So Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Chapter 19, verse 20, and then all of chapter 53. Micah, chapter 5, verse 2. Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Chapter 19, verse 20, and all of chapter 53. Okay, so these are references we have of him in the Old Testament. Okay, and in the New Testament, Jesus brings these prophecies to pass. But remember, at that time, the New Testament was still being written. People only had the Old Testament. Okay, they only had what uh, what is called the Torah, or I'm sorry, the Tanakh. So they did not have. Uh, what we call today the Old Testament. They didn't have, or no, I'm sorry, they didn't have what we call today the New Testament because it was still being written. They didn't have that. They had the Old Testament. So they have all these things prophesizing about Christ, right? So continue on with this note. Uh, Therefore, they were fully aware of his coming, yet they still did not recognize him. Ultimately, we can know a lot about God and totally miss him 
because we never took the time to get to know God. If we don't have a relationship with Jesus beyond accepting him as our Savior, or in some cases simply just going to church and or living by faith alone, then we make the same mistake the Pharisees and Sadducees did. We would know a lot of things about him and may even know the word of God like the back of our hand. So does Satan. Scripture reference for that is Matthew, excuse me, Matthew chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. Satan quoted scripture. So he, he knows the word too. Okay. But we will have failed to get to know the God of the word because we did have a personal relationship with him. It's funny because there's actually another lesson I wanted to teach kind of on Jehovah, and it has to do with one of the Psalms that I happened to be studying, and I realized in that Psalm, like David is calling God by his personal name. All throughout there, you see, at least in the King James, when you see Lord in capital, it most likely is the name Jehovah. Not always. But most times, in most cases, or even sometimes the name God, when it's in all caps, is Jehovah. So David is calling on him and calling on him and calling And it's like, do you know what kind of relationship you have to have with somebody to call them by their personal name? <laughs> People I don't know that well call me Jackie, and I'm like, eh, it feels weird. I don't really say anything. I just, you know, I'm like, okay. Well, on the inside, I'm like, uh, you can call me Jacqueline. Yeah, I'm Jacqueline. But once I feel like we've built a relationship, I've really built a relationship with that person, oh, call me Jackie. Okay? So we want to have that kind of relationship with God where we are, you know, the best way to get to know him is through his word because he is the word. Again, the living word is in your hands. There are apps now that you can get on your phone, and it will read to you. So there's no excuse for us not to have access. You know what I'm saying? Unless you live in a country where you literally got to read your Bible in secret, you can't have no app, and you got to sneak a physical Bible in, because if they can't, and it's having one on you might cost you a life. Like, we don't, we're not in that circumstance. We have all these tools and resources available. There's no reason why you should not have a true relationship with the one who gave his life for you. Don't make that mistake. It's not enough to know about him. We got to know him. We have to. Okay, so I see... I am out of time right now, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to close this out. I still had a little bit more left, but I'm, I'm trying to be conscious of time. <laughs> so I'll just come back to that next time, right? Because we want to take our time. We want to get an understanding. We want to make sure that we get whatever God has for us. And understand, I don't know why, maybe somebody need to hear it. Maybe it's for me too. So you might have to go back over that same lesson again and again and again and again. Be mindful. Jesus taught his disciples the same lesson 500 times. Over 500 times teaching the same lessons. So it's like, it was like, well, for 500 times, that's a lot. Yeah, because he, he was going to leave, and he needed to make sure that they knew it. They had to know it, because if they didn't know it, we wouldn't have it. We would not have this Bible today. Like, we, there's a lot of stuff that we, that we would not have access to today, that we would not know. If his disciples, making disciples, making disciples, replicating the process, teaching it over and over and over again, if they did not do that, we wouldn't know. We'd be lost. But we have it in our hands, and we have the knowledge. We have the tools because they follow the instructions in the, in the process that Jesus set, the standard that he set. 
So however many times you got to go back over it. That's how many times you got to do it. However long it takes you is however long it takes you. Okay, I told y'all, right, not digging in the Word, not taking that time to dive into it and to really get that understanding is like walking away, starving, rushing through the Word, trying to hurry up and, you know, rush through this stuff is the equivalent of trying to hurry up and eat really, really fast, and then what happens? You get sick, and it all comes back up, right? We don't want to do that either. I want it to remain in me. I want it to remain in me. I want it to take root in me. I want his word to come alive in me. And I want to make sure that in my getting, I'm not just digging to know things about him, but I'm genuinely learning more and more about the one who loves me more than anybody on this earth, who knows me better than I know myself. Okay, that's important. So, how many times you got to go back over this? Do that, all right? And we're just going to take our time. We'll come back to this little nugget for us for next time, though. We are almost done with the Asus, believe it or not. And then uh, we'll pick back up there with the Asus and then continue on with Christos or Christos. <laughs> okay. That is it. Let's go ahead and pray out. Okay. Lord God, I thank you once again for another day. I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. God, I truly pray that a message was received on today. I pray, Lord, that you will reveal to us where we need to draw closer to you. Um, Lord, I pray that you would just increase that desire, that hunger, and zeal for your word. Um, God, it's not enough to have zeal for you. We want to make sure that we are laboring under correct knowledge, um, that we're truly getting to know you for who you are in our lives, God. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you for the word on today. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, for the way you're transforming us. And I pray, Lord, that you would just send these women for us to go and scatter seeds. Um, to build and to do all the wonderful things that you've called to do in your name. In Jesus' name, I pray, thank God, and amen. All right, y'all. Like I said, however many times you need to go back over this lesson, do that. Because you see, we got a lot just in that one word. Hey, <laughs> if you haven't been seeing it already. And I uh, hope that y'all join us again for general Bible study on Thursday, the Bible study for everybody. I'll take care. Have an amazing week, and God bless. Bye.